What's up residents, welcome to Dangerville. We have some big news in the dino world, both in the entertainment and paleo side of things. So if you've been thirsty for more juicy dinosaur content, here we go. Starting off with what's going to get us all excited, a brand new cinematic experience. Coming to us from Universal and one of the leading creative minds behind Walking with the Dinosaurs, Beasts and Monsters, Tim Haynes. Titled Surviving Earth, the new docuseries will feature eight full-length stories that go in detail on Earth's massive extinction events. Of course, including the dinosaurs, as well as the events that came before and after Earth's mightiest of rulers. Shout out to the old dinosaur movie. That movie was totally underrated, I think. Tell me what you think. The series will be filmed in 12 different locations here on our lovely planet, and will combine both real-world footage with groundbreaking CGI to deliver some of the most breathtaking shots you could hope for, ranging from the Triassic to the Ice Age. Each story's goal will be to make us all very much aware of the fact that Earth is a hostile place that will forever be changing, and won't always be the paradise that some of us think that we've wound up on. Tim Haynes states that naturally the show will be educational and show us all some amazing imagery, but where it's truly going to shine is pulling you in with more than just flashy visuals, also focusing on delivering emotional stories that aim to add emotional stakes and keep the viewers invested in the episode. All of the best docu-series are more than just educational pieces. They manage to capture beautiful, heartbreaking, and even the most exciting and dangerous moments in a cinematic experience worth getting the whole family together for. The recent prehistoric planet did just this, so if Surviving Earth can live up to that standard, I think us Beast fans are in for one of the better docu-series in well recent memory. There's no official release date for this series just yet. I imagine we're a couple years away if they are just now starting to film the series. But when it does come out, it's going to air live on NBC here in the States. So good news as of now everyone, you won't have to subscribe to another random streaming platform just to get to watch this series. Although it is going to be on Peacock the day after if you want to like go back and rewatch it without commercials. Moving on from the showbiz world to the paleo world, the largest theropod dinosaur footprint ever found in Yorkshire was recently discovered. Um, Al, where's Yorkshire? The United Kingdom is made up of 48 counties. One of these is the historic county of Yorkshire, found in the northeast of England, and it's been occupied since the retreat of the first ice age at around 8000 BC. And the county is home to one of the many Celtic towns in Britain, and was the largest Viking settlement in the world. They called the town Jorvik, which simplified to York. The English would later settle in the United States and name a plot of land New York. But you might not have heard of that. In Yorkshire, you'll find the Dinosaur Coast, which has given us many discoveries, including the theropod footprints we're bringing to you today. I hope Jacob's not pronouncing it something like Yorkshire. This isn't Lord of the Rings, Jacob. I hope you learned something new. This has been Alistair. Now back to the video. The UK isn't known for many large theropod discoveries, but this nearly meter-long footprint over three feet proves giant predators did indeed walk these lands. The massive footprint was found by not a paleontologist, but actually a local archaeologist. Found by Marie Woods in April of 2021, when she randomly stumbled upon the fossil just by chance. She went on to say, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I had to do a double take. I've seen a few smaller prints when out with friends, but nothing like this. I can no longer say that archaeologists don't do dinosaurs. And according to the report, there is even evidence to suggest that the animal was resting or crouched down at the very moment the print was made, taking in the sun and possibly even relaxing. Now I got the pleasure to actually see some dinosaur footprints over in Colorado a couple years back. Truly an amazing experience and so I kind of share some of the same excitement that these researchers are having, you know, after finding this really nice looking footprint. The source, which I'll leave links to down below for all of today's topic, states Lead researcher John Hudson says, This important discovery adds further evidence that meat-eating giants once roamed this area during the Jurassic. The type of footprint, combined with its age, suggests that it was made by a ferocious megalosaurus-like dinosaur, with a possible hip height between 2.5 and 3 meters. End quote. 
Allegedly, the animal that made this footprint might have been taller than a basketball goal at the hip, which isn't T-Rex big, but man, that thing was still huge. Very cool news there, now let's move on to our last big dino update, and this one is actually pretty dang amazing. So you remember that scene in Jurassic Park 3 with the raptor, right? Alan. No, not that one. The one where Dr. Grant uses a raptor's voice box to mimic the sounds of the raptors. Well, Dr. Grant won't be saving himself from raptors with this discovery, but researchers have officially found the larynx or voice box of another dinosaur, the Ankylosaurus. Not only is this groundbreaking in its own right, not often you find the vocal cords of any dinosaur, but this particular specimen suggests that even non-avian dinosaurs, meaning the ones that didn't eventually evolve into birds, could have made bird-like sounds. Now the actual study, which I'm gonna link down below, is a bit, well, hard to understand when you're reading it. <laughs> Big words, guys. But I'll do my best to summarize it in a way that makes sense to the common folk. In short, this specimen had all the qualities of non-avian dinosaur voice boxes, but this one in particular had elements that are more close to a bird's larynx. Now to all of you that want the T-Rex to look like a pigeon, slow down. This isn't saying that the thing walked around pagakin like a chicken. According to this article, there is still yet to be a non-avian dinosaur found with a complete bird vocal system. But this discovery does support that at the very least, this individual, and others like it, were able to make bird-like noises. What exactly this sound was, we'll probably never know unless you invent a time machine. But I could imagine it sounding like a very deep and extreme set of chirps and screeches. Maybe a little something like this. But I'll leave the real theorizing to the experts who study this stuff on the daily. Nonetheless, this just supports that dinosaurs truly were Earth's wildest experiment. Seemingly just nature throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. They truly were the closest we'll ever get to myths and legends here on Earth. We plan to rock more dinosaur content as we approach the new 65 movies release in March, so stick with us here at Dangerville for more, you know, I don't know, like teeth and stuff. Some of you may remember our recent T-Rex video revolving around a topic of the animal possibly being even larger than what we thought. It's a good video, go check it out. Our friends over at the Mythos Labs who created the animation for that video just released a brutal new video about what happens to you if a lightsaber chops your arm off. So you should totally go check that out after this video if you're into that sort of thing. You guys remember to go outside and explore some today. The woods, the fields, the coastlines, the oceans, all of it man. Just go out there and experience some new and exciting things in our real world. You never know when you might just end up being the next one who finds the next big discovery.